patch notes for 10.2 are here. This update is going to be pretty eventful, a wink wink, as soon as our love event will start. This time a series of challenges will await you, aiming at reuniting some of Gwent's most known couples. That is not the only treat this month, as the new journey is starting live tomorrow. But more about that when the patch goes live. Of course, we didn't forget about the regular um, balance changes and fixes. Check all of the news in detail below and join Pavel Berza and John for the developer update. So if you guys missed that, obviously you can go ahead and check that out. Added a reward tree for Syndicate in the reward book tutorial page. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we're getting a reward tree for Syndicate added in the reward book tutorial page. That's pretty nice. Added a new coin highlight that reminds players to end the turn. That is also nice. I think a lot of people have been stuck there. Um... <laughs> Not knowing they need to end the turn, uh, me especially, so that's great news. Changes. Adjusted the initiative keyword to also include fee and spring. Hmm. Adjusted the initiative keyword to also include fee and spring. Alright. I, I thought that would be automatic. I didn't even know by now that wasn't a thing. Okay. But that's good, I guess. Good news. Now, let's go over to our first card. Changes. Neutral. Vigo's Muscle. Provision cost changed from 11 to 10. Seas cap changed from 5 to 6. I mean, that is pretty big in my opinion. It's a neutral card as well, so you'd never know when it's going to pop out. Okay, well, let's go take a look then at that. Yeah, it cancels initiative, in other words. Okay, Vigo Ma... There we are. Okay, so currently, Vigo's muzzle is at uh, lock an enemy unit with 5 or less power and seize it. It also costs 11 provisions. So now it's going to cost 10 provisions, which is way cheaper. And the seize cap will be 6. So, I mean, altogether that can play for 12 points for 10 provisions. Which is not bad. It really depends on what you're stealing, but a 6 gives you a lot more reach and potential. Um, it is a spell. Yeah, you are correct. It's a spell, so that's going to come in handy later on. Okay, so all in all, I think this is a good change, especially since nobody plays this card. Fran Francesca? Yeah, exactly. How about we first take a look at um, Square Tell so we can get an idea of how strong this is. Okay, let's start off with Francesca, shall we? So currently, she's a 7 point card for 10 provisions. And how it's going to be changed is, instead of having a counter of 3, it's going to have a counter of 2. So whenever you play a special card of any type, remove one counter. When counter reaches 0, spawn and play a copy of the last special card you played. If it is neutral, give it doomed. So let's say we play our last card as Vigo, Vigo's muzzle. That means we're going to be able to play it immediately again. I mean, which is rather substantial in my opinion. So you're going to be able to steal a six point card and then you're immediately going to be able to uh, steal another six point card. I mean, that's 24 points in, in like one turn, is it not? 24 points is not too shabby. Uh, hey, Baxi, when did the update came? Um, the update is coming tomorrow. So that's quite uh, interesting. Another card that uh, has a counter that's changing is going to be a uh, Sayov. So Sayov is also changing in square tile. Counter is changing from three to two. So this boosts an ally unit by five. When the card enters your graveyard, transform itself into Sayov. Sayov, Spectre. While in graveyard, remove a counter whenever you play a special card. 
When the counter reaches zero, summon Sal from your graveyard to the range row. So now this one's counter is two. This makes for a very synergistic deck, if I'm not mistaken. If you have Francesca, you have Sayov, you have a bunch of special cards. Maybe even Alzer, I don't know how greedy you want to do it. Um, yeah, so now you only have to play two special cards for this card to come out of your graveyard. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I like it. I think these cards weren't really being played nearly enough, right? Could end up with two of these using Francesca. Sounds neat. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm a used fan. Um, I'm a big fan. Let's see. The other change, one of my favorites so far, would be that of the uh, Great Oak. Again, this is also not really seeing play. Not really. It's already sort of strong. It's an 8 for 13. Damages an enemy unit by the number of cards to the left of Great Oak. Then boosts up by the number of cards to the right of Great Oak. So essentially you just place it on a row with 8 cards and it will either do 8 points of damage or 8 points of boost or whatever in between you choose to do. The power is being changed from 8 to 9. It's just not shabby. Meaning it's going to be playing for a ceiling of 17 points, right? 9 points itself. 8 points on the row. Not shabby. Uh, thanks for the follow. Provision costs change from 13 to 12, so it's also more affordable. Not bad. Ah, I quite like it. I quite like it. Uh, so Great Oak is uh, getting buffed by quite a bit. Two point buff. Well, one point buff. One point provision cost change, which is kind of substantial. Alright, and then the last changes of Squirtel is going to be that of Atriel and Meruga. I haven't seen these being played in forever, uh, so yeah, I don't even have Etrial premiumed. Didn't even think it would be necessary to ever get her premiumed. Let's do that real quick. There we go. Yeah, she's hardly moving. That was not worth my powder. Okay, um, yeah, you can see all the all the cards that came out back in the day. They hardly really move when it comes to the premium version. Um, CDPR definitely has gotten a lot uh, better when it comes to premiuming cards. So you've got Etril and Miruluga. Yeah, see, this is also like not really moving. Okay, so damage an enemy unit by three. If you control Miruluga, meaning it's on the board, damage it by seven instead. So the provision cost of this card is changing from an eight to a six. People tame wild animals, I talk to them. I like that. So Merluga, damage an enemy unit by three. If you control Etriel, also damage adjacent units by three. This used to be pretty strong back in the day. I remember people playing this and it just comes out and does nine points of damage, which is insane. And now it's just gonna be six provisions, which is also insane. You've got an elf and a beast. So if you're gonna go for a harmony deck, this, this is pretty nice to have. It has brushes for ears and human blood on its teeth. I think this is pretty awesome. I think this is pretty cool. I feel like it's now sort of a must include almost. The math is 10 for each crazy. I love it. I love it. I think Square Tail is going to be played more now. I hope this doesn't immediately turn into like a toxic meta where it's just slamming points with like ulzer and stuff i hope people are going to go for like harmony and trying out some other leader abilities along with it if they don't we can i think that will be on the top of our list trying to bring harmony back perhaps um all right so let's go to the other changes so we've discussed square tell we've discussed the neutrals now i think it's time for real skelliger so, Skellige. Skellige seems to be focusing on uh, Ceres, as you guys said. Appears so, at least. Skellige Geddeness provision cost changed from 13 to 14. I think this is super necessary. And I, I see you're all very happy with this change. So, this is getting nerfed, essentially. It's now a 14 provision artifact. 
it's now a little bit more expensive as it should be it's a pretty strong artifact and a lot of people are playing it at the moment so yeah changing this and what is next we've got knut the callus let's check that out okay please ignore that uh knut the callus let's go on damage an allied unit to the right by half of its po current power then damage an enemy unit <laughs> by that amount. Uh, okay, so damage an allied unit to the right by half of its current power, damage an enemy unit by that amount. Okay, so this is now being changed to zeal, order ability, damage an allied unit by half of its current power, then damage an enemy unit by the same amount. Berserk 5, at the end of your turn, refresh this ability. Berserk 5. So Berserk, let's just double check that. Berserk. Trigger ability whenever power is equal to or lower than specified amount. Okay, so yeah, so that card essentially has to be um, 5 points itself to do what it does. So when this card reaches 5... Meaning you're going to have to damage Knut down to 5 points. And then at the end of every turn refresh this ability? Or at the end of only that turn? I feel like this becomes an engine and is not a once-off thing. Premium it? I cannot afford to premium it, unfortunately. Not right now. I will at some point. Hmm... Berserk 5 at end of turn refresh. So yeah, that appears to be um, that appears to be an engine. Can he use order on himself? No. Damage an allied unit, no. Alright, interesting. So that's pretty strong. So you can continuously damage an other card by half its power. Transfer that to your enemy side of the board and refresh. Now, the only way to make this worthwhile is definitely if you are able to give them their points back with something like Ceres the Fearless. Like you said, Melusine potentially. Um, anything that wants to get damaged, essentially. If you have a bunch of self-harm cards, then this will be a pretty awesome card to have. Yeah, Blue Boy. Blue Boy also... Potentially cell phone control. I think this has the potential to become a new archetype that's really strong. We'll certainly see people play this tomorrow, that's for sure. So, restore is also changed. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Restore provision cost changed from 6 to 5. Heal an allied unit, then boost it by the amount it was healed. Yeah, I can totally see this being a card. My goodness. Imagine Knut with Melusine, and then you heal Melusine and boost it as well. That's amazing. And it's only going to be five provisions as well. So it's definitely something you want to include, because right now the only other alchemy cards at 5 is more Delirium than anything else, and at 6 you normally go for the Giga Scorpion Decoction. I could see you going for Delirium and potentially the Restore instead of going for Decoction. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, next. Sigvault. Sigvault. So currently Sigvald damages a unit by one, and it has a cooldown of one. With Berserk 4, it damages it by two instead, so when this card only has four points. Now, the power is changed from six to seven. Provision cost is changed from eight to seven. Ability changed to whenever this unit is damaged by other abilities gain bleeding for the same duration instead 
Oh yeah, they discussed this, didn't they? Order. Damage a unit by the duration of bleeding on self. Then purify self. If it was an enemy, damage self by the same amount. If it was an ally, boost self by the same amount. Again, self-harm package. This is going to be so cool. I want to see the combos people are going to use to pull this off. So let's quickly re-explain this in layman's terms. Firstly, it's going to be stronger. Secondly, it's going to be cheaper. Thirdly, the ability is changing entirely. What's going to happen is, let's say somebody... Uh, mm, okay, as I understand it, let's say you're damaging this card by six points. Instead of actually getting damaged by six points, it's going to get six turns of bleeding. Okay, then when it ha uses its order ability, you can either transfer that bleeding into damage to an enemy unit. So you can damage an enemy unit by six, and then you will be damaging yourself by six and purifying yourself. Or you can damage one of your own units by six, and then you will boost yourself by six. So, preferably, somebody won't damage this at all. If they kill it, it won't have bleeding. I'm sure if you're able to just kill the card in one go, then it won't matter. No, I don't think it has cooldown. It doesn't appear to have cooldown. It would be too strong if it did. So, yeah, okay, let's say I damage this with a uh, gutting slash that has blood thirst. So, I damage this by six points. It still has seven points of power then, but six points of bleeding now. Okay, then it's th their turn. Now they can decide if they want to transfer that six points of bleeding back at me, but then they have to actually damage themselves by six points. Or they can transfer to one of their own units, and then they get rewarded for it with a boost of six points. And the bleeding goes away with a purify. Now, ideally, what we'd want to do is we'd like to damage one of our own units by six that has a bunch of armor, like Draco Turtle or something that wants to get damaged. And then this card will get a massive boost for it instead. Pretty awesome. Pretty strong. You definitely don't want to damage this card if you're playing against a Skalliger. Unless you're able to kill it in one turn. Yeah, you definitely don't. Because you're essentially giving your opponent points. You don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I, I quite like this, I must say. This is awesome. It's very creatively done as well. Like, props to CDPR for the way they did this. Um, yeah, this takes a lot of creativity. This is not chess. Certainly not at all. Okay. This is a card I'd want in my uh, deck, that's for sure. It also says whenever this unit is damaged by other abilities... So you can technically play Sigvald and damage it yourself. You can damage it yourself. You can play Ceres the Fearless. And you can heal a unit, damage your own unit. And then transfer that damage back into another unit and get a boost. It has so much potential. Okay, next up is the Uncrate Warrior. Okay, Uncrate Warrior, power change from 3 to 4. Give an enemy unit bleeding, 3. If played from the graveyard, damage an enemy unit by 3 instead. Okay, okay, I like it. So it, it's a 6 for 4, but now it's going to be a 7 for 4, which is not bad. This makes me think it's also more of a must include, depending on what archetype you're going to be going for. Um, Alright, the other one is the Twersic Axeman. Twersic Axeman. Okay. Twersic Axeman ability change to deploy. Damage a unit by how much it is already damaged. So normally it was destroy an enemy unit with half or less than half of its base power. It would destroy it. Only if it was half of what it normally would be. Now it will damage a unit by ma how much it is already damaged. Huh. So, 
let's say let's say the self harm becomes meta, right? And you're playing a mirror match. And somebody just damaged their Melusine all the way down to like four points, but they haven't yet completed the combo and boosted it back. You can now use this Tursic Axeman to damage Melusine to death. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, in what other matchup will this card actually have value? I mean, it's very strong. It has the potential to play for way more than four points. But then again, it has the potential to play for four points, which also sucks. Like, what cards will already be damaged, you know? What enemy cards will already be damaged in such a way that you actually get a lot of value for this card? We have to remember, some of these fours are going for seven points already, right off the bat. Guaranteed seven points. Unconditional, no setting up or anything like that. So, this card needs to at least play for seven points to be worth inclusion in your deck. In other words, you already need an enemy that's damaged by three points. And then will that card even have three points left? Maybe it's a five point card damaged by three. You only get six. Mm. It has potential. It has potential. But I, I don't think it's a must include at this point. Okay, so time to go to Northern Realms. Okay, so what Resupply currently does is it triggers this ability whenever you play a Warfare card. Okay. And it's changing to, whenever you play a Warfare card, reduce this card's cooldown by one. Hmm. So resupply will only be relevant for cards with cooldown. And that's the reason they are changing Trollolo. Yeah, okay, so what Trollolo currently does is... It has resupply of gain two armor. Order, lose all armor and boost self by that amount. So now that resupply is changing to cooldown reduced by one for a warfare uh, card played, that means troller law doesn't make sense anymore. So troller law is now changing. Armor change from two to zero. Ability change to zeal order. Lose all armor, then boost self by that amount. Whenever an allied unit uses its order, gain one armor. Hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad. Whenever an allied unit uses order, gain armor. And then whenever you want to, like normally, you'd click the card, use the order ability, and you'd transfer all the armor into points. Not shabby, my gosh. We're gonna see some, uh, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of uh, Arbalest decks, I think, is it? Yeah, we're gonna see Arbalest decks, we're gonna see uh, Archers, for sure. Oh, that's gonna be really cool, really cool, yeah, stockpile decks coming up. Mm, gonna be scary as well. Okay, so with the change to resupply then, a few things need to uh, change. So we've got Fultest Pride, first and foremost. Fultest Pride. It's now changed that it has resupply as well. So, whenever you play a Warfare card, the cooldown will go down by one point as well. So we're gonna see a lot of siege decks, right? So we're gonna see the artifact coming out. Yeah, we're gonna see siege being played a bunch with a lot of warfare cards. Hold my dream Corvo deck. Can you imagine? Okay, next, Kaldur. Calder ability change to whenever you play a special card, spawn a Witcher student in this row. Adrenaline 4, spawn a Witcher student in this row at the end of your turn. So it does the same thing, except now the resupply has changed. So it's not triggered by a um, warfare card, it's triggered by a special card. So very similar, I'd say, because in Northern Realms we tend to only have warfare special cards anyway. 
but let's say you now have a neuromancy it will still trigger the uh resupply option and you'll get an extra witcher student so not bad not bad so they're essentially taking resupply away then okay next up is odrin odrin oh yeah i like this one this is perhaps my favorite one <laughs> Drinking without Odrin is like rowing without a paddle. <laughs> ah, Odrin's going to die of liver disease before the age of 30. Provision costs change from 6 to 5, so a must include. Ability change to Odrin is a one man crew. So doesn't have resupply anymore, doesn't have inspired anymore. He's just a one man crew. Meaning, any card that relies on the crew ability, let's say something like, uh, let's say, um, what do we want to go with? Siege Tower. So normally with Siege Tower, if it has crew, meaning it's placed between two soldiers, it will boost out by four, instead of gaining vitality. Now, Odrin counts as crew, meaning you don't have to place this between two soldiers, you can just place Odrin next to it. And Odrin is a one-man crew, so it will automatically trigger this crew. Then you can... Damn. You can just play any card next to him every turn and it will count as crew. That's awesome. Everybody's gonna have Odrin. I love it. And... Um... Uh, a virtual Twitch coming in with a raid. Uh, thank you so much, virtual Twitch. I hope you had a great stream. Okay, uh, Markham Alefaced. I've never changed it since. Thank you for answering the question. Like an inverse crew. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of this. We've already gone through Trollololo. Now we have uh, War Chariots as well. Having the new resupply tag. Let's check that out real quick. Okay, so now this is also just made stronger. Oh, I love this so much. Okay, so cooldown three. Now every time you play a warfare card, it will minus the cooldown by one. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right. So let's go over to the next one, Battering Ram. Battering Ram. Ability change to resupply. Order melee, move south to range row. Order range, move south to melee row. Damage highest enemy unit by three. Okay, it's still the same. Crew. Choose an enemy unit to damage. Uh, I think it's a little follow call slot. Cooldown two. So normally, if it had crew, it could be played immediately with zeal. Now, if it has crew, it can pick which card it wants to damage by three points, instead of damaging the highest enemy unit by three points. And thanks for the follow task. So, okay, it moves from the range row to the melee row and then damages a card by three, right? So you only want crew when it is on the range row so you want but it always moves to the right side of the range row so you're gonna want to have all of your soldiers on the range row so that you can place a card next to the battering ram every time it moves back to the range row to give it crew obviously odrin is not gonna move all the time like it did at some point i can't even remember when i just remember playing odrin very long time ago maybe beta um, he was a wacky card. Uh, Power Suku coming with a prime sub. Thank you so much, Power. I appreciate it. That's amazing of you. Welcome. So, yeah, uh, now you can just pick which card you want to damage by three points, which is a bunch, right? You can actually target specific cards. Boost row by one. Yeah, I remember the card doing something like that. It was a lot of fun. Okay, interesting. So, um, in order to pull this off, you're going to have a deck with essentially just soldiers in it anyway 
soldiers and engines most likely all right oh i like it a lot it also has resupply now meaning that the cooldown will be reduced by one one turn every time you play a warfare card so you don't have to wait two turns to move it up and down perhaps only one turn um i like it quite a bit quite a bit we're definitely seeing a buff here when it comes to siege engines and soldiers in the nr faction next up is going to be carabalista let's check that out Arrow Ballista. Ability change to resupply. Cooldown is still 3. So this cooldown will also reduce every time you play a warfare card by 1. Order range. Damage an enemy unit by 2. Crew is now at the end of your turn gain 1 armor. So normally you would get 2 armor. Now if this is placed between 2 soldiers or next to Odrin it will gain 1 armor every turn. Which is not shabby. Uh, it's going to make it very, very, very difficult to remove, if not immediately. It's already 5 points, so by the time your opponent has the chance to eliminate this card, it will already have 1 armor, which is 6. So you're going to have to use some of your 6 point removal to get rid of it ASAP. Um, hmm. Not bad, not bad. Next is the Karak Frigate. Alright, interesting. Karak Frigate. Karak for great. Ability change to resupply. It now has a cooldown of 2. Okay, it used to do this every turn. Now it will do it only every... No, it's changing sort of completely. Let's take a look at that. So, order. Spawn a volunteer on this row. Crew, set cooldown to 1. Huh. Okay, so normally, in order to pull off the Karak Frigate, you had to have this between two soldiers in order to use it every turn. So you had to set this up quite nicely in order to pull it off. Now, it will have a guaranteed cooldown of two points. Ugh, two turns, sorry. It will be spawning a volunteer every two turns, no matter whether it has crew or not. If it's screwed, it will have a cooldown of 1, meaning it will do what it did anyway. So this, this is a buff. This is a buff. So essentially this card does what it would have done anyway. If it has crew, it will spawn a volunteer every turn, um, which is nice. But, let's say somehow somebody disrupts your crew, and instead of not working at all, it will spawn a volunteer every two turns. So, it's quite nice. It means that this card can't get bricked anymore. It will continue to do what it does, except it will do it a bit slower. But, it has resupply, meaning that when you play Warfare, it will reduce the cooldown by one anyway. So yeah, so yeah, it works exactly the same. It has the same ceiling, like you said, true test. But it now has a higher floor, meaning it is guaranteed to play for more points if something goes wrong. Also, I just noticed on this card that this little guy here, right? This little guy here looking looking out. It's this guy. I know this is so random, but I just noticed it. This Karak Marine is the one standing here on the uh, Karak Frigate. I like this, like it a lot. So we're gonna see more Karak Frigates being played. Also, still has an order ability, meaning if you play this with something like Trollolo, it is 100% going to make Trollolo a massive boy. You can play it even three times with AA into Natalis. Yeah, so you can play this card more than once a turn now. Very awesome. Next up is the a Reinforced Ballista. All right. Adjusted the tooltip to fit with the change to resupply. Okay, so it works exactly the same. Reduce the cooldown by one. Okay, exactly the same. 
Next up, Rivian Pikeman. Alright. So normally this would damage an enemy unit by two. Resupply, it would boost self by one. Now, order ability, damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow, reduce cooldown of all units in this row by one. Inspired, always trigger death blow. Huh. All right. So the resupply isn't happening anymore. This has an order ability, meaning you have, you you can just give this a little uh, boost in one turn. <laughs> Corvo. And it will just make all of the cooldowns go down by one point. It's also a guaranteed six points. Six or five. Um, hmm. You can certainly make it work. You can certainly make it work. You also don't have to give it an inspired um, status. You can just make sure it gets the death blow before you play it. Huh. All right. Certainly not shabby. All right. Next up is Siege Ladder. All right. Siege Ladder. Deploy. Replaced with Zeal. Hmm. And order ability. Okay. So normally this would be a deploy ability where you move an allied unit to the other row, meaning you do it immediately. Now you get an order ability to do, do to do it with, which you can use immediately or you can wait. Hello. Extreme no Okay. Okay. Um so this is a buff essentially. It means you don't have to use it immediately, you can just keep it for when you need it most. And then you'll be able to move a card. Let's say you want to use it with the battering ram. And you want to use that battering ram. So you can damage a card by three points. You just keep the siege ladder for when the battering ram moved. And then you move it back immediately. Not shabby. Not shabby. Next up is uh, the siege master. Okay. Siege Master, power change from 3 to 2, armor change from 1 to 0. Okay, so that's that's too, too weaker, meaning this has to be getting a buff, right? Ability change to, when you play a siege engine, summon self from your hand to the right of it. Then draw a card. Oh my gosh. Is NR getting is NR getting its own uh, thinning card? We already have one, I know, but this one is cheaper, much cheaper. Order boost an ally by two. It used to do resupply boost adjacent siege engines by one. Now it's completely changed. So it is only two points now, though. It's still full provisions, so it doesn't matter. When you play a siege engine, which you're gonna do, summon this card from hand to the right of it, then draw a card. I mean, so that's a guaranteed thinning. Interesting. That's awesome. I love it. You're gonna want two of these cards. You're gonna definitely want two of them. But, 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 let's say you do have two of them. Will they both get summoned? Maybe. And what is nice about this is it gives you a, a soldier right next to the card in one turn without you having to play a soldier. So it just sets up that crew ability so much faster for when you need it. I love this so much. Uh, I love this a lot. Mm, awesome. Thinning, boosting, and setting crew up. Exactly. Okay, next up is the Siege Tower. Siege Tower. Ability change to zeal, order, gain vitality. Crew boost self by two instead. Cooldown two. Uh, 
Okay, currently it's deploy, gain vitality for four turns. Crew, boost self by four instead. Place for eight points, right? Now it's changed to gain vitality for two. Crew, boost self by two instead with a cooldown of two. So this is now an engine. This is huge. Because it can boost itself by two if you're having it crewed. So it won't get an unnecessary amount of vitality, you know, because at some point it will just have so much vitality it's hardly worth anything anymore at 16. But now it has a cooldown of two. So every two turns, let's say it's crewed, it will boost itself by two points. And we've got loads of cards that are going to be reducing that cooldown, right? It does not have resupply though, keep that in mind. So resupply won't affect this, which is good. But we have cards that can reduce the cooldown. So, wow. My gosh, what if you just play this immediately? You've got a long round with 10 cards in hand. I mean, okay, so it has order and zeal. You can use this at least four times, minimally. You can use this at least four times. That's eight points, plus four, which is 12, five. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all. And also you don't need to have it crewed immediately. The vitality is good enough. Now you actually need to remove the siege tower. Damn it, that's so cool. Okay, well, NR is getting a huge buff. I'm so happy. NR is now, you, we're going to see a lot of stockpile, we're going to see siege. I think people are going to get sick of it within the first week, but I don't care. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play it yourself. It has no resupply, no, but we just uh, went over some of the cards that can affect it anyway, like um, I believe it was the pikeman. Pikeman will be able to reduce the cooldown in the row. We'll have two pikemans perhaps in our deck. Okay, well, that's awesome. So... I give, um, well, it's my favorite faction as well, so I'm a bit biased here in this regard. Anor, I'm going to give a solid 5 out of 5. 5 out of 5 for uh, boosting a dead archetype. 5 out of 5. Squirtel, Squirtel, I'm giving a uh, 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5. Only because it's going to uh, encourage unitless Alzer decks with Francesca and Sayov. I don't like that. Uh, watch it, people are going to break it within the first day. But I still give it a 4 because of Etril and Merluga and Great Oak. And I think this gives us the potential to see some Harmony decks coming out. Maybe some Elves. Whatever. Um, I like the fact that these are units, so you have to play them. Maybe I give it a 3.5. I think I'm being too generous. I give Squirtle a 3.5. I give NR a 5. I give Monsters a 0. <laughs> Monsters are not getting any changes. Um, I would have liked to see changes. I'm going to be honest here, especially since nobody is actually playing Monsters. I give MO a 0, of course. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, Emo, uh, that's, that's sad that, that we are not seeing anything. But yeah, like Rav said, it could mean that there are some changes planned. I mean, there, there's obviously a lot going on behind the scenes that aren't public when it comes to these things. And I know changes are being planned well in advance. So it can be that we just have to wait a bit. We can still play Quad Gurney. Exactly, exactly. Okay, well, let's go over to our other faction we'll definitely be seeing a lot of. And that's going to be Nilfgaard. First change is that of Emir. Emir Var Emiris. We don't see this being played ever, so... They do not call me the patient. Take care, they do not call you the headless. Provision cost change from 11 to 10, so it's cheaper. And that is it. Alrighty. So what this normally does though is draw a card, then move a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. Whenever your opponent plays a unit, give it spying. This will be useful. 
order sees the one power enemy unit with spying devotion at the end of your turn refresh this card's order all right not shabby we'll see how this comes in handy with the other changes so the next one we want to see is that of philip van Merlin. this is a super interesting one um very interesting bear with me power changed from five to six so already more difficult to remove okay normally this would damage a unit by one cool down one if the target had a status you would damage it by two instead it's a vampire and an aristocrat aristocrat is important as that will trigger the poison archetype so if people want to bring poison back that's an option now ability change to deploy if you control a vampire gain zeal order give doomed to an enemy unit you know what's the first thing that comes to my mind this <laughs> destroy a doomed unit just casually destroying it <laughs> it's kind of big um kind of big anyway uh let's go back to philip <laughs> philippe 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 oh we're la stupid tia okay so give doom to an enemy unit if it already has a status all right a status is just about anything you see on the card that isn't the numbering right it can be bleeding it can be vitality it can be poison doomed it can be a lock um so yeah status is any of those things if it has a status lock it instead so you don't give the doomed you give a lock if it already has more than one status you poison it instead. Cooldown one. That is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Because you can just keep giving it statuses. So let's say you take a huge card with no status. You give it doomed. The next turn, you give it a lock. The next turn, it already has two, so you poison it. The next turn, you poison it again. And you just continue to do that with all the cards you don't like. Some of them might even already have things that uh, count as statuses as well. That's so, so, so cool. You definitely want to get rid of this card. Oh my gosh. Is armor a status? No. Armor is not a status. Let's put it like that. Armor has a number on it, right? So ignore numbers. Um, but a shield counts as a status. Uh, Privet, Privet. I learned some Russian today. I can introduce myself now. Privet, Minya, Zavut, Tia, Ochen Priatno, Kakdiela. Yeah? Privet, Minya, Zavut, Tia, Ochen Priatna. Something like that. I'll get there. I'm learning languages now because I, I have time. Anyway, uh, defender is a status, yes. NR defender can be poisoned directly. Hey, agreeable mayo. Um, okay, next. Next, next, next. For a snack in Edinburgh, smiley face. Cheers. <laughs> oh, thank you, Panda. I appreciate that. I th I'm pretty sure that is a coffee, my friend. That is my first coffee in Edinburgh. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Um, little accent. Ah, uh, yeah. I have to. Pra I'm practicing it. I'm practicing it. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> um. Okay. What is next? What is next? So I think this card is so awesome. Um. It's extremely unique, really. And I think purifies might become necessary. I I don't know about you. I I can see purifies 
being a, a solid thing you have to include in your deck. Or you just need to get rid of this card immediately. But what if it's behind the defender? Can you really deal with the defender and with Philip if you're not playing Nov's card yourself? Um, if you're not going to play it yourself. I still need to learn the Russian uh, alphabet. So I can actually start reading messages. That's the one thing. Even Russians find it hard to learn Russian. <laughs> she still struggles. Uh, hats off to her though. Hats off to her. Okay. Next. Swear's power changed from 3 to 4. Swear's power changed from 3 to 4. So this now plays for a guarantee 10 for 8. I'm sure it means Swear's itself is changed to 4 and not what it can seize, right? And have worse accent than you. <laughs> Thank you. What about the Russian anthem? We'll get there. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. So next is Vatier. Vatier is fun. Let's see. Melee. Seize a locked enemy unit. Alright. Order. It will now lock an enemy unit. So this card's order ability at 11 provisions will provide a lock. Conspiracy sees it instead. So conspiracy normally means the card has a uh, spying status, right? Like this one. Trigger ability of target enemy has spying status. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does this imply for Vatier? Vatier will have a guaranteed lock. So it won't be bricked like it normally would have been. Or if you gave the card spying, you will steal any card. No, it doesn't just see spies. It can, but if you give spying status, it that's how it works. You steal a card that has spying status. So now what you need to do is you need to make sure a card isn't locked but has spying. And how do we give cards spying, you say? Well, in here gives cards spying automatically. And you've got hmm what else do we have? I know Philip Philip gives it doomed and lock and poison. So that won't cut it. Essentially, we would need to make sure cards have spying, which is very easy to do. Even easier than having a lock. Because you can have cards that give spying passively, whereas with a lock, you have to either use your leader or you have to use um, a card to do that, which wastes a turn and it makes it more difficult to set up at the air. So cards that will give spying is M here. Fergart. Fergart will give spying to a random card whenever you play a special card. Mage Torture, yeah. Now that would be like a lock in the sense that you actually have to set it up. So not ideal, but it's an option. Mage Torture will give an enemy unit spying, yeah, for sure. Imagine you steal a, twi uh, you steal a 24 point flitter. Exactly the. I, you, you, damn, guys, back in the days when I first started streaming, one of my. One of my I got so far with Nilfgaard because nobody played Vatier, nobody expected Vatier, and then I would just lock the biggest card on my opponent's side at the end of the game, which would be like 36 maybe, and then I steal it, and then I get 36 points, which is absolutely bonkers, so what, that plays for 72 points? Um, <laughs> I mean, you just win if you pull Vatier off, that's what makes him so strong, he's your win condition. If you pull Vatir off, you win. It's rather infuriating to play against, but um, it's pretty nice to pull off. Interesting. Okay, well, next up is a uh, Mangonel. 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 Range. Damage an enemy unit by one. For every spying unit adjacent to it, increase damage by two. Yeah, so normally this would be almost... This is a horrible card as it is. Horrible. I can't believe it's five provisions. So now it's changing to whenever an enemy unit gains spying, 
damage units adjacent to it by one. Now it's bonkers. So now we have Fergart and M here. Every time our opponent plays a card, the cards at its size will get damaged by one point. That is absolutely insane. It's ridiculous. I love it. It is a five provision engine, essentially. A five provision engine that plays for two points every turn if you have him here still alive is vatir no longer melee locked i think um i think it might not be no it appears not to be melee locked anymore so you can play it in every uh row huh okay well i like this a lot um next is the von murlem servant but we're definitely gonna have to have a defender that's for sure Van Moerlehem Servant. Never seen this card played. Aw, she, she's so scared. This is so cool. She's serving them a rat because they're vampires. Damn, they say she served the Moerlehems for 30 years and she hasn't aged a day. <laughs> okay, vampire. It's a human though. I'm very confused. I am so confused. Oh yeah, I was about to say, um, this card is getting zeal if there's a vampire on the board. So what vampires do we actually have in Nilfgaard? A bunch. Oh my goodness, Masquerade Ball is coming back. Mark my words. Mark my words. All the aristocrats. She can't be human. No, that's very odd. If it was a vampire, it would have been way better. Hey, Panna. Okay, uh, so Van Moerlem's servant then. Van Moerlem's servant. Normally, it would be given allied unit vitality with duration equal to number of enemy units with status. Alright, for four provisions, that's okay. Now it's changed to deploy. Copy all statuses from an enemy unit to another enemy unit. Boost self by the number of statuses copied. I mean, that's absolutely bonkers. Can't you just literally, you can take a defender and put it on another row and make it a small card so you can quickly kill it. You just take the defender status with all the really cool cards right behind it. You put the defender status on the other row on a very weak card and she gets boosted for doing it. It's copy. Okay, okay, I missed that. Okay, so no, we do not want to do that. <laughs> Taking that back. Um, but... Okay, it's not moving, it's copying. Yeah, okay, that changes it. So we want to take bad statuses and move it. So we can copy a lock. A poison. Uh, Jake the cake coming in a, with a sub. Thanks, Jake. Welcome. Welcome So let's say you combine this card with our new upgraded Philip card so with Philip uh, Let's say Let's say you've used Philip now on a card. So it has doomed locked. It's locked and it has poison, right? so you take this four provision card the servant you copy that and you put it on another card and philip which now has a literal cooldown of one will be able to poison that card in the very next turn because it already has poison it has multiple statuses so you can just go ahead and poison the biggest card on the board especially if this card is behind a defender that's absolutely crazy there's so much potential for this. So much potential. You smell a lot of bugs. I mean, it will be interesting to see. <laughs> it will be interesting to see. This is, yeah, this is a six point card now as well. 
I mean, I like the change, and yeah, it's super creative. Absolutely love it. Uh, thanks for the follow, Captain. Yeah, okay, so when it comes to Nilfgaard, I give Nilfgaard's changes a... Hmm, what do I give it? What do I give Nilfgaard? What do you guys think? Um... It depends what archetype we're promoting here and whether people like the promotion of that archetype. So if I have to give it points for reviving dead cards, I would absolutely have to give it something like a five. Um, I mean, nobody played Emir, nobody played Philip, nobody played uh, Vatier, Mangonal, or the Van Moerlem Servant. These cards were all dead, 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 dead. So when it comes to reviving them, I'd say this is a solid 5 out of 5. Uh, we'll see these decks being played tomorrow already. When it comes to how healthy this is going to be for the meta... I'm not going to be a doomsayer. Not going to be a doomsayer. But mark my words, I bet people are going to be calling this the most toxic Nilfgaard deck in the next week. This is going to be the deck that people are complaining about. Especially if it brings back Masquerade Ball. Literally. Why wouldn't it? Poison everywhere. <laughs> Philip finishing them off every turn. Free poison, free poison, free poison. It's like there's no there's no limit on poison anymore. You have uh, guaranteed fangs of the empire, two of them in this one. Normally that's two poisons. Then you've got your other two poisons in the deck, which is four, and that used to be it. Unless you want to go with the cobra, which is overkill, of course. And you also had morale. So normally you, you wouldn't have morale, you'd have the cupbearer for purify value as well as poison. You'd have two fangs and you'd have two more when it comes to your masquerade ball. And that's all you had to worry about. Now, you don't even have to target the same card with poison all the time. You just fill up in there and fill up just smacks poison everywhere you want to, right? You just eliminate those cards, put fill up behind a nice defender and Philip is an aristocrat. So what does Philip trigger? Philip triggers Masquerade Ball. Okay. Yep, mark my words, within the first two or three days, Reddit will be extremely upset about this. I don't yet know if I can blame them though. I th this has the potential to be extremely abusive, but I, I am not a doomsayer, again, we are, this has the potential to not be, but I, I have a feeling this is going to be used to hell and back. Um, okay, so Tia gives this a solid 4 out of 5. Yes. Um, next up is Syndicate. Syndicate, okay, well, the first Syndicate change is that of the Jackpot Leader ability. So normally jackpot gives us 30 provision. <laughs> Thanks, true test. Um, it normally gives us 13, so now it's going to give us 12. So it's been nerfed by one point. Meaning you're going to have to take out one of your cards. Not the most difficult thing to do. Um, especially since you have a lot of cards here in the mid-range value that you don't necessarily need. Of course, I'm looking at the poison one. But you're still going to keep King of Beggars, you're going to keep Savola, you're going to keep Siki, all that jazz. Uh, but it's a start. Off the books, though, is getting buffed, which is awesome. Off the books, currently, it's 16. It gives you two coins and three charges. But the most important part is the fact that your tributes cost one coin less. So that's quite nice. Provisions is being changed, though, from are 16 to 15 which is a nerf obviously it's a nerf to the amount of provisions you have in your deck by one then the charges are changed from three to four so now instead of having six coins 
you're gonna have eight coins which is huge because now this gives you a almost jackpot like reach when it comes to coin so normally you could just quickly get six coins all together in one go now you can get a guaranteed eight coins in one go which is enough to uh trigger savola to give you context and if you trigger savola in one go and you've used tributes before that then you'll be able to get your king of beggars out in one go and your tributes are decreased so i'd say this is this is definitely something the pros will be considering because already not only is this nice in the long run if you're able to work with coins that is it also gives you way more provisions three more provisions than that of lined ugh, than that of jackpot so you can fit a better card in your deck as well three is a is quite a bit now there's only one change here that we have to check out and that's the king of beggars king of beggars power is being changed from three to one so king of beggars is still very much alive <laughs> nobody ever cared about the three points it brought we only care about the coins it gives you and the fact that it's a spender um if people wanted to remove the king of beggars they could have done that anyway it's just three point removal you need so if somebody wants to protect it they can still just quickly use the, it as a spender get all their coins out it doesn't really make a difference in my opinion um it's it's still a good way of trying to nerf it down but i don't know i feel like king of beggars is just a very strong card unfortunately and it's there's not much you can do about the fact that it's a pretty strong uh, mechanism in itself how does OTB interact with King of Beggars off the books? While in deck, whenever you pay a tribute, remove a counter for each coin paid. Interesting. You're thinking it might affect King of Beggars negatively because tributes are cheaper. Let's look at the wording. Your tributes cost one coin less. So yeah, technically, King of Beggars is going to be more difficult to pull because it will have a counter of 12. Normally we reach that counter of Savola at nine and Azar at three. That's 12 on the dot. So if we were playing um, a off the books leader ability, we'd be two coins away from actually getting King of Beggars out. We'd have to play at least three different cards, or we could we could pull it off with something like Salamander and Savola. But point is, how about Ludivicus? Ludivicus is five, so this should work. It will be four plus nine eight sorry so that would be 12 on the dot so okay you're gonna have to have a ludovicus in this sort of deck defender isn't gonna cut it that's if it works the way we think it does interesting that in itself makes the whole thing a bit more sketchy because right now syndicate is strong because of the fact that you have king of beggars if not for king of beggars syndicate isn't as strong it's simply not so uh, it will be interesting to see if people actually go for it it's certainly the case that uh, cdpr is trying to make tribute in itself a more viable archetype they're trying to force you to play more tributes in your deck i mean that's definitely their intention and perhaps they they pull it off perhaps people actually start playing this i'm sure people will play off the books it's not that difficult to adjust I as well i mean a lot of these cards are good you you definitely want them in your deck you just have to be more careful how you build it <laughs> okay interesting so for syndicate what are we giving syndicate the idea was to nerf syndicate not make it stronger trying to buff off the books is definitely going to change things whether it changes things for the better that's a different question i don't think it does I think it's still going to be very strong. But somebody's going to have to make a new deck first. 
Uh, I give Syndicate a 2.5 out of 5. Um, with regards to the fact that I think it's still going to be very strong. It's a good step in the right direction. I like the fact that Off the Books is going to be played a bit. But the fact that you're going to get 8 coins like that means you can still pull off any of your finishers. Salamander and Savola. Best part is you don't even need 9 coins. You're gonna get off anyway with the tribute ability, right? 